I'm Marianne Underwood of Underwood Gardens, an open pollinated and heirloom seed company in Illinois. I'm here to tell you that seed saving is simple. It was done for thousands of years as a matter of course until the 1940s when hybrid seeds were aggressively marketed. People stopped saving seeds from hybrids because the seeds they saved did not reproduce the parent plant. Let's back up and explain what different kinds of seeds are. Open pollinated seeds are those that are pollinated by whatever way Mother Nature intended. Could be bees, birds, bats, slugs, bugs, worms, wind, water, whatever way Mother Nature intended is the way they're pollinated. Heirlooms have been chosen by man as the best of the open pollinated for flavor, for fragrance, for earliness, for vigor, for whatever characteristic the person liked. Not only did he save the seeds, but he passed them down for generations and generations. Some heirlooms come three or four hundred years down to other people. Hybrids are man-made. They started out in this century as a way to help farmers perhaps um, harvest all at once in the field. And now they've gotten to the point where they are, things are hybridized for cosmetic appeal, longer shelf life, and actually to fit in the containers in which they're shipped. As home gardeners, we don't need that. We can grow the old-fashioned things that have flavor and taste and save the seeds and have them in our garden. Tomatoes are the favorite vegetable for home gardeners to grow. Tomatoes, for the purpose of seed saving, should be left on the vine or plant until the tomato is ripe or even overripe. Tomatoes like this that have a regular leaf have to be separated by about 10 feet to prevent cross-pollination. The older potato-leaved varieties, where the leaf is shaped like a potato leaf and the flowers are a bit longer, must be separated by about 25 feet to prevent cross-pollination. Seeds are easy to save and we'll show how to do that inside. For saving seeds from tomatoes, the fruits should be allowed to ripen on the vine to their ripe color, which can be red, sometimes green. Here's yellow. Here's what's called a black tomato, even though it's um, really red, but it has green shoulders and a mahogany color. Then you would take the ripe or overripe fruit, cut it open. This is black plum tomato, an heirloom from Russia. Squeeze the seeds into a jar. Actually, if it's still edible, you can save little bodies and put them in salads. Add just enough water to give you about twice as much as you had from the seeds in there. And stir this around once or twice a day for two to three days. You can put a lid on it if the smell of fermentation bothers you, and then you can shake it for a day or two. It's very important to label seeds. Uh, tomato seeds, once they're out of the tomato, look like every other tomato seed, so it's good to know what variety you have. If you see toward the bottom of this jar, the seeds are gathered at the bottom. Those are the good seeds, the viable seeds. There should be a layer of mold at the top, and this will all pour off. If I put it here and open it, you'll see there's some mold and some junk at the top. I will take that and pour it carefully off until I get down toward the seeds. Now the seeds are at the bottom. I will pour that through a strainer, rinse them with some water, there are very clean tomato seeds to be saved. Now I can leave them in the strainer for air circulation or spread them on a non-porous surface or, and this is something that we made just for drying seeds, from scrap lumber put together like a picture frame, has little feet and a screen where the stapled in where the glass would be. This makes a wonderful screen for drying seeds. And you can spread them out and the air circulation helps them to dry quickly and evenly.
a safe and simple and secure way to store seeds is to put them in a plain white envelope once they're thoroughly dry. Make sure you label what they are, write the name on the envelope. This one I'm saving is Ever Bearing Cucumber. And I'll write that here and I will also put the year I'm saving it so I'll know when I go to plant it how old it is. Open the envelope and put your well-dried seeds in. Now you don't have to seal it unless you really want to. You can fold it and put it into a resealable baggie along with a desiccant. I'm using a silica gel pack. These come in purses and vitamins and shoes and also at flower drying establishments. Um, you can also use powdered milk or rice. That way if any moisture gets into the bag it will go to the desiccant rather than to the seeds. You want to keep them dry. Seal the baggie and then place this in a cool spot like the refrigerator is perfect. If you have seeds stored cool and dry they'll last for many years and you can use them year after year.